Strawberry shortcake. No, not that strawberry shortcake. This strawberry shortcake. Originating as a green scar in 1972, she has had copious makeovers throughout the decades and has released many series that have sold really, really good smelling toys. You just have to have one, they smell so good. She was well known and loved back in the early days. However, nowadays, her character could hardly be recognized as strawberry shortcake. But how did we get here? What is the history of strawberry shortcake? Strawberry Shortcake was first introduced as a greetings card in 1972 by Barbie Sargent, who was working as a freelance artist for American Greetings. American Greetings is a privately owned American company and is the world's second largest greeting card producer behind Hallmark Cards. The character first appeared on a Laurel Valentine's Day greetings card in 1972-1973, and at the time, she wasn't known as Strawberry Shortcake. She was instead called Girl with the Daisy or Strawberry Girl. She was depicting holding a daisy and wearing an orange strawberry bonnet, thus the reason for these names. The art director of American Greetings, Rex Connors, knew that the card was very popular and he determined that it was due to the strawberry motif. He then requested Sargent to create four cards with a strawberry-ish outfit for the mega test market. Sargent completed the assignment in early June 1977, sending American Greetings four full-color deleted cards depicting the strawberry shortcake character in full color. These tests marked the first time that the public saw Strawberry Shortcake in her new design, which received a positive reception. Later in the late 1970s, more Strawberry Shortcake concept art was drawn by Muriel Farian, an illustrator working in American Greetings Juvenile and Humorous Card Department. Muriel Norris Farian, born June 11, 1945, is created with creating the Strawberry Shortcake brand and all its characters, while Barbie Sargent is credited as the creator of the Strawberry Shortcake character. Just felt like I needed to clear that up, you know? Anyway, Farion then went on to design a subsequent 32 characters for a Strawberry Shortcake franchise. Later characters that were added to the line were designed by Cindy Mayer Patton and Janet Jones. While the artwork for this series was done by a number of freelance artists, the majority of the art was painted by Francis K Kariotakis, while Lynn Edwards served as the editor of the line, helping to develop the characters and storyline. To close out this section of the video, we'll talk about the first issue of the Strawberry Shortcake dolls, which came out in 1979 and were created by Keener Products. Since Strawberry Shortcake herself resembled a ragdoll with her freckles and her curls, it would make sense for her first toy to be a ragdoll. The doll then was designed by Muriel Farian and made by Susan Cretno, Farian's sister. I tried to find out how well this doll did in terms of sales, but couldn't find anything, so let's just say it did really well. Also in 1979, Keener produced five strawberry shortcake dolls. The characters included were Apple Dumpling, Blueberry Muffin, Huckleberry Pie, Strawberry Shortcake herself, and Purple Pie Man. The dolls were each scented after the fruit or dessert they were based on. So it's safe to say that the whole scented gimmick was a thing since the very beginning. As I mentioned earlier, Fryan then went on to design a subsequent 32 characters, some of which I will list off now. Orange Blossom with Marmalade, Blueberry Muffin with Cheesecake, Angel Cake with Souffle, Raspberry Torte with Rhubarb, Lemon Meringue with Frape, Huckleberry Pie with Pupcake, Plum Pudding with Elderberry, Almond Tea with Marasa Panda, Apple Dumpling with Tea Time Turtle, Apricot with Hop Salad, Banana Candy, Butter Cookie with Jelly Beer, Cafe Ole, who is a Mexican girl that comes from Mexico Coa. How cute is that? And her little dog. Yo! Cafe Ole, you will always be famous. <clears throat> yes, I'm biased. <laughs> Cherry Color with Gooseberry. Creeps Sasset with Eclair Poodle. Lemon Ara with Sheep Up Sugar Woofers. Lime Chiffon with Parfait Parrot. Mint Tulip with Marshmallow. Racing Cane with Dirt. The Peculiar Purple Pie Man of Porcupine Peaks. Try saying that sometimes fast. Sour Grapes with Rex. TN Honey. The Berrykins and Mr. Sun. <sighs> that was a lot, and this isn't even all the characters, but don't worry, as we go into the different universe, I'll be listing the characters that were created anew and updating the design of the old ones. Now, the 1980s were the years when Strawberry Shortcake was the most popular, as it was in these years that Strawberry Shortcake became popular with young girls throughout the United States. This is also when Strawberry Shortcake got her first ever animated cartoon, and this is also the year when Strawberry Shortcake got her first ever video game. And she also got a lot of toys, stickers, and clothes made. But we will go more in depth about that stuff later. But first, I think it's most important to talk about the copyright infringement by Barbie Sargent against American Greetings. In 1984, Barbie Sargent filed a suit in the US District Court, 
charging the giant firm with copyright infringement and misappropriation of a character she claimed American Greetings pirated from her and renamed Strawberry Shortcake. She's the hottest thing they've ever seen. We're not seeking an injunction or anything like that. We're not trying to shut them down, said Christopher B. Fagan, the artist's attorney. But by law, she's entitled to the profits from the business. Long story short, Barbie Sergeant won the rights to Strawberry Shortcake back because of the case, but eventually she returned rights back to American Greetings after winning the case. She did not want Strawberry Shortcake to die or disappear since she was so popular. Barbie Sergeant never received credit for her creation and the credit has had been given to other American Greetings in-house employees who made changes and expanded on the idea, then later on giving credit for creating her. So in the end, Barbie Sargent was never really credited as the creator of Strawberry Shortcake. However, nowadays, she does receive the proper credit. As I mentioned earlier, the 80s is when Strawberry Shortcake got her very first animated cartoon. The cartoon was simply titled Strawberry Shortcake and consisted of six 21 minute long episodes featuring Rosie Taylor as Strawberry Shortcake and was set in the nation of Strawberry Land. The episodes were The World of Strawberry Shortcake, Strawberry Shortcake in Big Apple City, Strawberry Shortcake Pets on Parade, Strawberry Shortcake Housewarming Surprise, Strawberry Shortcake and the Baby Without a Name, and lastly Strawberry Shortcake Meets the Berrykins. As you can tell, the series was more of a one-off special rather than an actual series, with episodes coming out in the all different years. Now this series set more as a commercial to sell toys rather than an actual series, and this helps to segue into the toys that were made during this decade. After counting, Kino produced 50 original Strawberry Shortcake dolls from 1980 to 1985, and of course, all the toys were scented, and I will list them off now. Starting out in the 1980s, Kino reissued the original 5 dolls, just with curved hands, and added 4 more characters, which were Apricot, Lemon Meringue, Orange Blossom, and Raspberry Tart. The dolls were 14 centimeters, while the babies were 8 centimeters, and all the dolls Kino made were of these measurements, a purple pymian, it's just the purple pymian. Next, in 1981, Kino reproduced all the previous 9 dolls and created 5 more dolls, which were Angel Cake, Butter Cookie, Cherry Color, Lime Chiffon, and Sour Grapes. In 1983, Kino made the International Friends dolls, which added 6 more characters to the collection, which were Creep Sosette, Mint Tulip, Café Ole, Almond Tea, and Lemon Ada, who were twins. As well, in 1983, Kino made a Dancing Strawberry Shirt Cake doll. Her body was jointed, and she came with a posing stand and a ballet mirror that was complete with a ballet bow. In 1984, Karina released the Party Pleaser dolls, which were 8 of the previous dolls, yes, including Café Ole, and 2 new characters, which were Plum Pudding and Peach Blush. Who was like, who is she? What happened to Raspberry Tart? Anyway, the gimmick of these dolls was that they were all dressed up in party outfits, and their little pets all had party hats on. In 1984, Kino also made the Sweet Sleepers dolls, which were 5 character dolls that had closable eyes, a fruit shaped sleeping bag, and a sleeping pet, and were all dressed in sleepwear. The characters included were Orange Blossom, Raspberry Tart, She's Back, Lemon Meringue, Strawberry Shortcake, and Blueberry Muffin. No Café Ole, unfortunately. And I just have to say that these are personally like my favorite dolls, they're adorable, and if I could have any of the old Strawberry Shortcake dolls, I would definitely want one of these. And Café Ole, of course. Also, in 1984, Kino made the Berry Babies dolls, which consisted of four drink and wet baby dolls, which were all dressed in sleeping gowns and came with a bottle, hat, and nappy. The characters included were Blueberry Muffin, Lemon Meringue, Strawberry Shortcake, and Orange Blossom. And well, I don't think I need to explain what they did, as the name is pretty self-explanatory. Also, in 1984, damn, they made a lot of dolls in 1984. Also in 1984, Keener made the Strawberry Shortcake Blow Kiss dolls, which were 6 40 inch dolls that all came with a bonnet, a romper suit, and boots. And they would all blow a scented kiss when squeezed. The characters included were Baby Needs a Name, Strawberry Shortcake, Angel Cake, Orange Blossom, Apricot, and Lemon Meringue. And lastly, in 1985, Keener made the Berrykin dolls, which included 6 regular dolls, which all came with cherub like babies called the Berrykins instead of pets. And they also made the leader of the Berrykins, who was a berry princess the size of a Barbie doll. And she came with a sparkly dress, a wand, and a stand. Now the characters included in this set were Banana Twirl, a new character, Mint Tulip, Peach Blush, I guess they killed Raspberry Tart again, Plum Pudding, Orange Blossom, and Strawberry Shortcake. For some reason they didn't include Blueberry Muffin, so I guess she's that too. Now these were all the dolls Keener made. 
as they also made miniatures, plushies, places, accessories, and books. And I will not be listing all of these, as they can make a whole other video themselves, and the majority of the other toys were just things you could put your main dolls in. So they aren't as important, important as the dolls themselves. And this section is getting way too long already. It's also important to note that the majority of these products were made by Keener up until 1985, when they stopped, as the popularity of Strawberry Shortcake weaned. I need to talk about the Strawberry Shortcake comics. That's right, among the many pieces of merch Strawberry Shortcake sold, comics were one of them. And the comics were made by none other than Marble themselves. That's right, Marble made Strawberry Shortcake comics. Marvel that made Spider-Man. They made Strawberry Shortcake comics. And that's just... I just found that so incredibly fascinating. Now, there are only six issues that were made. But man, the things I would do to get my hands on at least one of these. Now that we are done with the toys, we can finally talk about the Atari game that came out in 1983. Now, the game was called Strawberry Shortcake Musical Matchups, and it was developed and published by Parker Brothers for the Atari 2600 in 1983. This was the first video game in the Strawberry Shortcake video game series. The plot of the game was that Strawberry Shortcake and her friends were about to put up a musical show when the Purple Pie Man came and cast an evil spell on everyone, even himself, <laughs> <Don't mess. laughs> causing their bodies to be mixed up. And the gameplay of the game was to rearrange the scrambled characters within a given time limit, as indicated by Mr. Sloan on top of the screen as he goes eastward. Once a character is correctly thrown, they will dance and a theme song will play. The characters included in the game are Strawberry Shortcake, Huckleberry Pie, Blueberry Muffin, Lime Chiffon, and the Purple Pie Man, of course. And just as a finishing statement for this section, American Greetings also made Strawberry Shortcake Christmas ornaments, which I just thought were really cute and made for a nice closing statement for this section. It's safe to say that the 1980s were one of Strawberry's most successful decades. Now on to the 1990s, which was... The most uneventful decade for Strawberry Shortcake, as her popularity began to wean in 1985, and by the 1990s, her popularity was basically gone. But there still were efforts to revive the franchise back to its former glory. In 1991, THQ, a video game company, got the rights to Strawberry Shortcake dolls, and they tried to revive the franchise by producing a new line of dolls. However, this line only saw moderate success and lasted for just a year. There was no animated series to accompany these new dolls, however, official art does exist and gives a glimpse as to what the characters will get up to. Speaking of characters, let's talk about the characters that would have been featured in this series. The characters THQ revamped were Strawberry Shortcake, Orange Blossom, Blueberry Muffin, Lemon Meringue, Raspberry Tart, Lime Chiffon, and Cherry Color. There were also hints that Angel Cake would also be featured as you can see her pet skunk in some artwork, but you never see Angel Cake herself. And as to what they would get up to, from the art, we can tell that they mostly danced and sang. This was also the only generation where Strawberry Shirky had blue eyes for some reason. Now, when it comes to toys, THQ released your run of the mill dolls. From the pictures on the box description, we can see that each doll came with two outfits, which were based on different activities, like a sleepover and going to the beach. And of course, all the dolls were scented. And THQ also remade some of the old 1980s toys, such as the Blockies dolls, featuring only Strawberry Shortcake this time as well as the Berry Bake Shop. They also made two rag dolls, one with the new strawberry design and one with the original 80s design. And of course, they made your run of the mill clothes, puzzles, board games, books, bags, strawberry shortcake shampoo, and strawberry shortcake talc and cologne set. Yeah. <laughs> and I just find it strange that THQ, the video game company, never made a strawberry shortcake video game. Like, isn't that your whole thing? Maybe it was too expensive back then, what do I know? And that wraps up the 1990s. Like I said, very uneventful. And from here, the franchise was on hiatus for 12 years. The 2000s was another big decade for Strawberry Shortcake, as her and her friends got a major revamp. This is also the decade where you get possibly the most iconic theme song, and the Strawberry Shortcake that a lot of people grew up with. But this is also the year where you get the most controversy, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There are many things that happened in this decade, and this is how I'll break it down. The revival, characters, animated series, video games, controversy, and toys. And that is the order I will go in. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with the revival of Strawberry Shortcake, first and foremost. In early 2000s, stickers and gift papers were being sold in Toys R Us with concept art for a Strawberry Shortcake revival. 
Most of these concepts have Strawberry Shortcake dressed up in her usual 80s clothes, but without a bonnet, and instead a sun hat. And one image depicts her wearing jeans and a striped tee, a design you are all familiar with. When American Greetings was asked if new Strawberry Shortcake things were planned, they said no. However, the new designs for Strawberry Shortcake and her pets said otherwise. Finally, before the reboot officially happened, Bandai, the Japanese toy company, was granted manufacturing rights of the Strawberry Shortcake dolls and toys. Alright, as I mentioned all the way back in the 80s section, I will be showing the new designs of the characters and introducing any new characters. I will now display the new designs of the old characters. Okay, got all that good, because we will be talking about the new characters. Starting off, we have Annie Oatmeal, Brambleberry Fairy, Caramel Corn, Coco Calypso with Papaya, Fairy Queen, Frosty Puff with Freezer Pop, Ginger Snap with Chocolate Chipmunk, Lime Light, Margolo B. Berry Glow, Peppermint Fizz, Rainbow Sherbet with Triple Ripple, Seabury Delight with Kiwi, Tangerine and a Torta with Banana Bongo, and Watermelon Kiss. Alright. And those were all the characters that were created during this decade, that also most likely never showed up anywhere else ever again. And with all the characters introduced and updated, we cannot talk about the animated series. The new series was simply called Strawberry Shortcake and ran from March 11, 2003 all the way to September 12, 2008. Four seasons of the show were made, all totaling 40 episodes according to the Strawberry Shortcake wiki. The series still took place in Strawberry Land, but the only difference is that it is divided into districts like Cakewalk, Orange Blossom Acres, Huckleberry Briar, and Cookie Corners. Also, Poke Custard and Pop Cake now belong to Strawberry Shortcake, while Huckleberry Pie has a frog named Shoofly Frog, and Strawberry Shortcake is now voiced by Sarah Hank. During this time, the series also introduced fillies, which are basically My Little Ponies with Strawberry Shortcake. Each of the fillies are connected to the characters, and only the main filly, Honey Pie Pony, can talk. And that's basically all you need to know about the 2003 series. But hold on, we're not done with the shows just yet. During this time, the Sweet Dreams movie was also released. The movie was released on theaters October 7, 2006 by Kitchen Films, and is the first feature-length film to feature the title character. It also includes the first appearance of the Purple Pie Man since the Strawberry Shortcake special from more than 20 years ago. This was the only story from the 2003 Strawberry Shortcake series made in CGI. The plot of the movie was that after arranging a sleepover with her friends, Strawberry and the rest of the gang traveled to the land of dreams on a seaplane-like boat that Ginger Snap built, which helped to stop the purple pine man, sour grapes, and their army of nightmares from ruling the earth. This was the only Strawberry Shortcake movie to be released in the 2000s, as I am not counting the specials. Now, for the final series that was released during this time, we will talk about the 2005 live action series. That's right, Strawberry Shortcake also got herself a live action series. Now, the show was developed by an Argentinian live action TV series and air aired on El Nueve, or Channel 9 for you non Spanish speakers. The show is called Frutilita. The show aired for 36 episodes in half hour blocks. The purpose of the show was to have the brand gain international acclaim, which I'm assuming it did. And with the final show, we can wrap up this section of the series and move on to the video games that were made during this decade. A total of 9 games were made, based on the 2003 characters, all released from 2003 to 2007, and the list goes as follows. Strawberry Shortcake, an amazing cookie party made by The Learning Company in 2003, made for PC, it was a puzzle type game. Strawberry Shortcake, very best friends made by The Game Factory for PC in 2004, and this was also a puzzle type game. Strawberry Shortcake, summertime adventures made by Majesco Entertainment for The Game Boy Advance in 2004. And this game was an action platform plant growing simulator. This game was only released in North America, and a limited edition packet with the GBA video version of the first Strawberry Shortcake episode was also sold. Strawberry Shortcake Ice Cream Island Riding Camp, made by the Game Factory for the Game Boy Advance in 2005. This was an action puzzle game that was only released in Europe in limited quantities. Strawberry Shortcake Sweet Dreams, made by Majesco Entertainment for the Game Boy Advance in 2006. This game was an action platformer and was only released in North America. Strawberry Shortcake, Strawberry Land Games, made by the Game Factory for Nintendo DS in 2006. This game, or games, were party, puzzle, and platformer type games. Strawberry Shortcake, The Sweet Dreams Game, made by the Game Factory for the PlayStation 2 in 2006. The game was, you guessed it, an action platformer. 
Strawberry Shortcake also had a DDR game made by Konami in 2006, which is pretty cool. And lastly, Strawberry Shortcake The Four Seasons Cake made by, once again, The Game Factory for the Nintendo DS in 2006. The game was, ah, you guessed it, an action platformer. Now I would go into detail about the gameplay and the plot if it was only like two games, but since there are nine that would take me way too long and would make this section longer than it already is. So with that, let's move to the next topic, controversy. Now when I'm referring to controversies, I don't mean like strawberry turkey said the F word or something, I mean like legal issues. But yeah, when I say controversy, I don't mean like Strawberry Shortcake got cancelled, I mean like legal controversy. Mostly stuff that's written in the wiki. Starting off in 2003 with the Penny Arcade controversy. Now, Penny Arcade is a webcomic focused on video games and video game culture, written by Jerry Hawkins and illustrated by Mike Ka Krahulik. I am so sorry if I butchered that, please don't come after me. The comic debuted in 1998 on the website lunigames.com. And since then, Penny Arcade has been among the most popular and longest running webcomics currently online. You might have heard about these two creators before, as they are the founders of PAX, and by extension, PAX West. Which is a new fun fact for me, I did not know that. Anyway, the controversy was that in 2003, Penny Arcade posted an advertisement for an imaginary computer game titled American McGee's Strawberry Shortcake, which was not only a parody of Strawberry Shortcake, but also a parody of American McGee's Alice the Computer Game. Now, the parody depicted strawberry shortcake and plum pudding in a very, um, not child friendly way. Like, I can't even show the image, because I'm pretty sure YouTube would come after me. But you can look it up yourself. Alright, you saw it? Yeah. American Greens took offense to the parody and issued a cease and desist letter, to which the authors complied. Another quote unquote controversy was the cookie jar lawsuit, which happened from July 23rd, 2008 to April 2009. And the story goes as follows. In 2008, Cookie Jar Entertainment, which was a Canadian media production and distribution company, announced its intention to merge with DIC Entertainment, the international film and television production company. At this time, DIC Entertainment held the rights to the Strawberry Shortcake animated series. The merger was completed on July 23rd. The same day as the finalization of the merger, Cookie Jar Entertainment announced further intentions to acquire the Strawberry Shortcake and Care Bears franchise from American Greenies. The deal was expected to finalize on September 30th, but up until April 2009, there was no word on the status of the acquisition. Cookie Jar delayed the acquisition due to difficulty in financing it. It was then later revealed that Cookie Jar had previously offered $195 million for the franchise. Due to this situation, American Greens put the franchise back on sale, where a French company, Moonscoop, expressed interest and offered $95 million for the franchise. Then Moonscoop and Cookie Jar competed against each other, which led to various lawsuits, and in the end, American Greens emerged victorious in the case and retained ownership of the brand. That was kind of boring, but this last controversy marks the end of our controversy talk. One was interesting, the other was boring, but now we can move on. Now, when it comes to toys, I couldn't exactly find a website to show me at least the dolls, like the 1980s and 90s, but of course, they made the usual dolls, rag dolls, playsets, books, clothes. Shampoo too, probably. No story short, they made a ton of stuff, and it would have been too much to talk about anyway. So, yay! Short section! Now, before we officially wrap up the 2000 section, we need to talk about the 2009 movie before we officially move on to the 2010s. In June 2008, Hasbro, everyone's favorite toy company, won the license from Playmates, which resulted in another relaunch of the series. The relaunch began in the summer of 2009 with the release of the CGI movie The Sky's the Limit, with Anna Kummer as the new voice of Strawberry Shortcake. The story follows Strawberry Shortcake and her friends as they try to save the town's dwindling water supply. This was the first installment of the rebooted series. And with that, we can finally wrap up this section of the 2000s, which was yet another big decade for Strawberry Shortcake, and arguably one of the best generations of Strawberry Shortcake. Now, the 2010 reboot started, as I said, in 2009 with the Sky's the Limit movie, and then a series followed. And just like how we did in the 2000s, I will go in order like this. The reboot, characters, animated series, video games, and toys. No controversy section here, as Strawberry Turkey didn't get up to any during this time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the series was officially rebooted when Hasbro obtained the rights to the Strawberry Shortcake, and when the Sky's the Limit movie came out in 2009. 
merchandise of the new reboot also began appearing in mid-2009. And that's basically all you need to know about how the reboot happened. And with that, we can move on to the characters. Now, the majority of the old characters came back in one way or another, so like in the 2000 section, I will first show the updated designs of the old characters, and then introduce the new ones. So here are all the new designs. Okay, before I let you continue, I just, I just need to talk about Orange Blossom, because like, what is this? Why did you get rid of her curly hair? Why is she also lighter? Listen, as much as I like her outfit, this was just not it. As you can tell, this generation had probably the most drastic redesign out of all the other previous generations, both in character designs and personality, greatly changing the personalities of the old characters. And with the old characters updated, we cannot talk about the new characters. Starting off, we have Cherry Jam, Mr. Longface, Sour Grapes, and I just wanted to look at her design, analyze it, really memorize her design, okay? Because I, I need to come back to her design later, or I just, just put a pin on it, just remember it, okay? And Sweet Grapes. As you can tell, not many new characters were introduced in this series, and not many of the old characters came back either, as the show was mostly centered on Strawberry Shortcake and her close group of friends. And that quickly wraps up the characters of the 2010s, and let us move on to the animated series. After the movie came out, a series came out following it. The series was called Strawberry Shortcake's Berry Bitty Adventures, and debuted on October 2009 on The Hub. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> The series ran for 4 seasons and released 65 episodes. The series ran from 2009 to 2015. After the 2015 series ended, a web series was released in 2018. The series was made by Wild Brain Studios and debuted on YouTube and YouTube TV. And instead of being CGI like the previous series, this one was a 2D animated series and featured Allison Lake Rosenfield as Strawberry Shortcake. The series featured the return of Facing King and Purple Pie Man to the series. Just like the characters, there weren't that many TV series made in this generation. And that allows us to quickly wrap up this section as well. Now when it comes to video games, there weren't any console releases. There were, however, a ton of app games. Because of course there were. I mean, it was the 2010s and every kid had a tablet. And they still do, unfortunately. And they were either playing Strawberry Shortcake Bake Shop or watching Smile HD and getting traumatized. Which for you? Comment down below. Anyway, there were 10 app games that were released during this time, and they were Strawberry Shortcake Big Shop, Strawberry Shortcake Sweets, Strawberry Shortcake Candy, Strawberry Shortcake Dreams, Strawberry Shortcake Food Fair, Strawberry Shortcake Ice Cream, Strawberry Shortcake Holiday, Strawberry Shortcake Pocket Loan, Strawberry Shortcake Dress Up, Strawberry Shortcake Berry Fest, and Strawberry Shortcake Puppy Fun. That was a lot of Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain the gimmick of all these games, as they are all pretty self-explanatory. And they're all app games, so it's not like they have an overarching plot to them. And we've all played app games before, so we all know basically what they're about. And yeah, that's basically it for the game section. Just like all the previous generations, they of course made toys. They made the usual dolls, playsets, books, plushies, clothes, and of course shampoo, hand soap, and 2-in-1. Subscribe if you ever use the 2-in-1 2010 Strawberry Shortcake Shampoo and Conditioner. Also, a side note, I just remember I had a lemon meringue toy that smelled so good. That's it. The toy just smelled really good. <laughs> and also, just like in the 1980s, Strawberry Shortcake also got comics made in the 2010s. The first issue of the comics was released in 2016 by IDW Publishing. The comics were written by Georgia Ball and illustrated by Amy Maberson. There were 9 issues released, technically 8 because of issue 0, but I'm gonna say 9 because I don't know how issue 0 works, okay? I read all of them and they were all pretty charming. If you want to read them, go to the Berry Bitty Adventures wiki and you should be able to find them. If it doesn't work, um, look harder. <laughs> now before we wrap up this also kinda uneventful decade, we need to talk about the attempts to reboot the series again in 2017. In 2017, Wild Brain released promotional images for a rebooted Strawberry Shortcake. And... It's safe to say the fans did not like it at all. We don't exactly know if there were any episodes ready to release yet, but because of the amount of backlash from the fans, we never heard about this project ever again. And that quickly wraps up the 2010s. Once again, this was also kind of an uneventful decade. Nothing super big happened during this time. And it helps us to segue into the strawberry shortcake of today. After 
around about three years on Strawberry Shortcake News, Wild Brain Spark Studios released a new generation of Strawberry Shortcake. The new show is called Barry in the Big City, and so far there are two seasons and a total of 86 episodes according to this website I found. Like all the other generations, the old characters had a makeover to appeal to the new generation. And of course, with all the new other sections, I will be updating the designs of the old characters. But I will skip the new characters, as the majority of them are just the old characters, but with a new design. Now, you remember Sour Grapes, right? And how I told you to remember her design? Do you remember how it was really punk rocky and overall pretty awesome? You probably just want me to show you the new design already, so I will. I... There are no words that can help me describe how much of a downgrade this was. No, this wasn't even a downgrade, it was just straight a murder. Like how do you go from this to this? I'm sorry, I, I just can't, I can't send the new design. I'll, I'll let you continue now. And those are the new character designs. Some people hate them, some people love them. Who are you? Tell me in the comments below. So far at the time of making this video, no doll line of the new characters has been made. There has been, however, a rag doll made in the style of vintage strawberry shortcake. And when it comes to other merchandise, the official strawberry shortcake website only displays coloring book pages, and they have like a promotion for strawberry shortcake themed birthday party, but no sight of video games or toys or any other strawberry shortcake themed products. So it's safe to say we still have a lot left to see from this brand new generation. Today, Strawberry Shortcake inspires girls to make the world a better, sweet-smelling place, where every little berry is effort can make a huge difference. Strawberry demonstrates leadership, believing in yourself, celebrating differences, freedom to experiment, and sometimes fail, and girl power. And that's about every piece of Strawberry Shortcake media out there. There are probably some bits and pieces that I missed, but hey, this is my first time doing a video like this, and it's very much not perfect. But if anyone sees this, leave some suggestions in the comments, like what could I do better next time, or something I can implement into other videos, as well as just talk about strawberry shortcake. What generation did you grow up with? What's your opinion on the new reboot? And if you were in the world of strawberry shortcake, what fruit would you be, or what dessert? Me personally, I would be a guajaba, but what would you be? If you make a drawing as well, tag me wherever it is you post it, and put it under hashtag strawberry shortcake OC. If anyone does make something, I want to see it! Please do consider liking and subscribing, and remember, life is delicious.